you are or where you're from, you're welcome here as part of the community of First Baptist Church. And if you're a visitor with us today, we are glad you chose to spend the morning with us. And in the building, there are cards and key racks in front of you where you can jot information down if you'd like and put it in the offering plate. And if you found us on Facebook, you can uh, leave a comment or you can private message us or uh, anybody can learn more about the church by emailing us at welcome at fgcburlingtonbt.com. And let us stand and begin worship by singing together our congregation music, which is printed in the bulletin and in the honest way. Please join me in the call to worship. We are ready, O oh Lord, to behold the presence of your spirit among us. Bless our spirits with openness and joy. You have come on this journey seeking hope and peace. You, O oh Lord, have poured your spirit on us. Justice and peace shall be brought to all God's people. No more shall fear and doubt claim us. God is fulfilling an ancient promise, promise of a Savior. Our hearts rejoice at this good news of God's love. Amen. Can you now sing it? Oh, um, we will, we will be singing the hymn, The Angel Gabriel from Heaven Came, page 169. <laughs>
अब चैनल लाइन जोड़ और लो The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom, and the crocus is it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and shouting. What does joy feel like in the new world? Joy feels like everlasting love. Joy feels like the freedom to be with who God created to be. Joy feels like sharing love and kindness. Joy feels like pride. Advent is the beginning of this new world, a better world where joy boldly bubbles in an unexpected place in unexpected places. May it be so. The three Advent candles are lit: the candle of hope, the candle of peace, the candle of joy. Amen. Light the candles. <laughs>
We thank you for the opportunity to respond to your love and generosity by sharing our gifts with others. Our hearts sing with joy as we work with you to bring true peace and justice to our world. As we prepare for the coming of Jesus, may our lives proclaim your good news for all throughout the earth. Amen. You may be seated.
Good. How, how's your Advent going so far? Going okay? The waiting's been all right? Not too terrible yet? Come see me soft just a little bit. Well, as you see, we have, last week, Dorian helped us set up the stable for the Tibby, right? First week, we had just the prophet Isaiah come and tell us the Christ child is coming. Last week, we set up the barn, but is, it, is the barn ready for baby Jesus yet? No. As a matter of fact, at this point in the story, Jesus' parents, one, who have been born, Jesus' parents, Mary and Joseph, don't even know about this barn yet. Right? So today we're going to add some things, creatures, to the barn. And I have six things. Let's see, how many kids we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got nine. So I've got six. Six sheep.
pray in every moment, but we don't always take that opportunity. But I invite you now to just rest in the Lord. Put your feet on the floor, your shoulders back, relax, and just rest in God. Let us breathe in God and breathe out peace. Breathe in God and breathe out peace. In the prayer, there will be moments of silence where you can lift up your own prayers. And when I say with expectant hearts, you're invited to say, we lift our prayers to you. God of love and God of joy. On this third Sunday of Advent, we have gathered to celebrate the coming of your child, Jesus. All around us, we see your light shining in the lengthening darkness. We thank you for the comforts of this season, the expressions of love and attention. We thank you for the many blessings with which you shower us. Hear us as we lift up our prayers of praise and thanksgiving. With expectant hearts, we lift our prayers to you. God of light and love, we pray for ourselves and for others. We long for your Advent proclamation of good news for the oppressed and brokenhearted. We cry out for relief from our griefs and from our burdens. We mourn for those who have died, and we pray for those who are struggling with illness or other difficulties. We pray for Jim, who's having heart surgery this week, for the Danforth family, for Natalie and her family, for Laura, Nage, Rebecca, Chuck, Ray, Frank, Kathy, and all those on our hearts. Bring them healing and comfort and strength. We pray for those in our communities who are worried about the high cost of food and Christmas presents and just living expenses. We pray for those who are lonely and at odds with their families in this season. We pray for peace here and around the world. We pray for the people of Burma, of Ukraine, of Somalia, and Iran. We pray for all who are standing up to oppression and fear. We pray for all who have become refugees and for those who have welcomed them. Help us, Lord, to feel your presence. Hear us as we lift up our prayers of supplication. With expectant hearts, we lift our prayers to you. God of mercy, light, and love. Forgive our lack of faith in your loving power. We look around us and all that we see is what we don't have. We fail to notice the daily blessings you lavish upon us. Clear our blindness to the needs of others. Strengthen us and move us from our lame excuses for not serving you. Help us to truly listen to one another, not with pat answers ready, but with loving and generous hearts. Heal us and make us ready to truly be your disciples. Hear us now as we lift up our prayers of confession.
with expectant hearts, we lift our prayers to you. Loving God, we lift up all these prayers to you, knowing that you hear them. Hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is actually an insert in the bulletin. It is, My Soul Proclaims with Wonder. You may... Verses 46 through 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. And holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. 
He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Will you join with me in a spirit of prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. For the first two weeks of Advent, we heard from the prophet Isaiah, who proclaimed God's grace to a troubled and suffering people in Isaiah's time and in our time too. Today, we hear from the prophet Mary, who proclaims again that God has done and continues to do great things for God's people and all of creation. Mary's prophecy is something we need to hear because our world is in distress and turmoil. We know that things are bad. You don't need me to list all the troubles because we all know them. But we don't know how to fix them. Mary's song of praise and joy points out a way. We need to hear what Mary is has to say to us because Christmas is coming. <laughs> it is fast approaching. And are we ready for it? Not just in our shopping and tasks mode, but are our hearts and our spirits open and ready to welcome the Christ child? Are our minds and our bodies ready for the changes that Christ brings to the world? Today, we have the opportunity to stop and just contemplate the great gift given to us on Christmas and on every day. The gift of Jesus, our Christ, Son of God, born in Bethlehem. And not only to contemplate the gift, but to contemplate what this gift means for us and for the world. And so to help our contemplations, we're going to spend some time with Mary and her song. Like Mary, we too can magnify the Lord and rejoice in God, our Savior. Mary's song is one of the most beautiful and profound texts in all of scripture, known as the Magnificat. This song is Luke's gospel in miniature. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German theologian who was killed by the Nazis, he called the Magnificat the most passionate, the wildest, one might even say the most revolutionary hymn ever sung. It proclaims the essence of Christ's message in both personal and global terms. It is not for the faint of heart, nor for those who are too comfortable with the status quo. Mary is an unlikely prophet, at least in the world's eyes. She's young. She's vulnerable. She's a woman. She has no status on which to base her pronouncements. She's not a court prophet. She has no pulpit for herself. She has no access to people in power. She's just a, a young person in a little two-bit town. She has nothing but her participation in the great miracle of the incarnation. And at the time of her song, when she says this, the incarnation is a reality to her, but it's not a reality to anybody else. Nobody else has experienced it. In fact, her participation actually puts her in danger as an unwed mother. Her participation causes her to risk severe consequences. At the very least, she could be shamed. She could be ostracized. She even risks the possibility of death. 
But despite all that's stacked against her, Mary boldly sings out the truth of God. The term Magnificat comes from the Latin word to magnify. And I want us to stop and think about what Mary says in this first line. My soul magnifies the Lord. How can she, how can we magnify God? When we magnify something, we make it look larger. We bring it closer to ourselves. We make it more clear, right? How can we magnify the divine, which is beyond our understanding or even our imagining? Mary magnifies God by her role in bringing Jesus to life. She magnifies God through a tiny baby. Her action increases God's presence in the world and makes God's purposes more clear. She brings God closer. She makes God more clear. How can we do the same? Mary's song begins with how God has blessed her. God is profoundly and personally involved in Mary's life, and she rejoices in God, her Savior, who has looked with favor on the lowliness of this handmaiden. She praises the mighty one who has done great things for her. It's no small thing to be highly favored by God especially when you are acutely aware of how preposterous this idea truly is. She doesn't worry about the dangers or the trouble this blessing is going to bring to her. She only sees the blessing. Mary then moves from what God has done for her to what God has done and <laughs> continues to do for humanity. She proclaims that God's mercy continues from generation to generation. God has shown strength with his arm and scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. It's not a great image that strength of arm and scattered the proud. This strong arm of God is the baby Jesus. Think about that for a second. The strength of God revealed in the vulnerability of a child. And notice that Mary says this strength is in the present, is right now and in the past. It's not something to be wished for in the future, something we hope will come around. It's to, to be, it is to be depended on right now, just as it always has been. Mary sings, God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Right in line with the prophecies of Isaiah, Mary's song is a radical Advent carol, proclaiming the world-changing presence of God. Before the birth of her child, Mary is proclaiming Jesus' gospel. The kingdom of God, where the first shall be last and the last first. These are words of profound comfort and profound challenge. She's telling us that everything must change. That everything will change. Mary ends her song by singing again of God's mercy. God keeps God's promises to our ancestors and to our descendants forever. God kept promises to our ancestors. We'll keep God's promises to our descendants. Mary's life and the role she plays is part of God's promise to the people. And her child is the fulfillment of God's promise. When we read Mary's words, we too participate in God's promise. Our spirits are lifted by the power and the beauty of Mary's vision of God and her vision for the world. We are encouraged to say yes to God. 
to use our lives as vessels, helping God to be born in our world. Mary did not let the strictures of her day shape her response to God. She didn't care what was the proper thing to do or the proper way to do, thing, do things. She risked everything to be part of God's incredible plan. And we too are called to let go of the lens of our culture and to embrace with joy and commitment the extraordinary vision God has for creation. A world where the lowly are lifted up and the hungry are fed and all of creation is redeemed. When we look at our world, we struggle to align what we see on the news and our God's vision for us. It's hard. There are a lot of big problems that we, lowly as we are, we, we can't even think about how to solve them. But the message of the Magnificat is each one of us doesn't have to solve world hunger on our own. We only need to follow our merciful and mighty God who comes among us in the tiniest, most imperceptible ways, favoring the small and the weak and the lowly and promising faithfulness from generation to generation. We need only serve this mighty one in whatever smalls and imperceptible ways that we can and trust that justice as our, only our merciful God can conceive of it, that justice is being worked out one baby, one generation, one moment at a time. Think about reaching out to a neighbor who you know is struggling. Think about listening to the concerns of someone with whom you may not always agree and listen to them with open hearts and open mind. Speaking up when someone shares misinformation or shares a, a story that they think might be funny, but really is racist or derogatory to, to not chuckle along, but to say, you know, that's really not the best story to share. Think about sharing our resources with those in need. All of these little acts strengthen our communities and work to bring God's vision of justice and peace to reality. We're called to do these seemingly small acts with the boldness of Mary. That's the, the cool thing. She's a small person, but she sure has a lot of courage. So we are, we're called to do these small things with the boldness of Mary, not just half-heartedly or meekly, but to really embrace that all that we do, all that we do, all that we are, the everyday stuff and the bold, audacious stuff, all of it can serve to magnify the Lord. At the time of her song, Mary had the tiny beginnings of new life growing in her body. Within each one of us is a spark, a call from God, urging us to be part of God's vision for creation. We each have the potential to do great things for God, even if they seem small at the time. Our task is to listen to the call and to respond to it with commitment and with joy. Not just like, eh, yeah, maybe, but yes. Even things that seem small and inconsequential, such as singing a song or holding a baby, this might change the world. There was a German theologian named Meister Eckhart who lived in the 13th century. And he wrote, we are all called to be mothers of God. For God is always waiting to be born. Let us approach Christmas with expectation and joy and power. 
May we magnify the Lord in these days to Christmas and every day. Let us pray. Incarnate God, we thank you for the gift of Jesus, our Christ. We marvel at your love for us, your desire to be in relation with us. Empower us to welcome Christ into our hearts today and every day, so that we might work with you to bring about your vision for your people and your creation. Amen. Our Christmas pageant, entitled I Wonder As I Wander, is going to be part of our worship service next Sunday. The kids and, and not just kids, but the whole pageant group, crew and cast have been working hard on this, and it's going to be a wonderful um, celebration of the Christmas story. So that's going to be during church on the 18th. If you've got friends and neighbors who... who might be like to come. This is a great Sunday to invite them to come because it's going to be combined worship um, with our Karen community and it's going to be lovely, lovely. Uh, the rehearsals for the families are rehearsing today and then we're going to have another rehearsal on Saturday the 17th at two o'clock. So we'll run through the whole thing on Saturday. Also, well, that's on Saturday. On the 18th, in addition to the pageant, in the afternoon, we're going to go Christmas caroling to some of our homebound members. And so if you are interested in Christmas caroling with us, we generally gather here at the church and we um, carpool. Uh, we we divide up our list or we, we organize our route of where we're going to go. We go, we sing three, five songs each spot. It's a lovely, lovely um, activity for us and for the people who we sing to really deeply appreciate it. So we said 1.30, we would gather here on uh, the 18th to start the Christmas caroling. Next Tuesday, not this coming Tuesday, the 20th, uh, we are going to have at, at seven o'clock, we're going to have what we're calling the longest night service. This is a is a Christmas service, particularly um, focused on um, folks who are grieving. Christmas season can be really difficult uh, for folks that are grieving, and um, we remember our uh, folks who we have who we love who have passed. So it's a nice, quiet service. It'll be here in the sanctuary, seven p.m. Also, a great service to invite um, any friends or neighbors who you know might be having a rough time this year. Christmas Eve, we have a service at 9 p.m., candlelight service at 9 p.m., and we will have a family service that we're going to pre-record, um, which will be online on our website and on YouTube. So families um, who might be at home with their kids, you can watch it anytime during the day on Christmas Eve. And New Year's Day, we will have our Epiphany Party. One other announcement, or a couple other announcements. One, um, the UGB, the Unified Governing Board, is going to have a special meeting on Zoom tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. It shouldn't be a long meeting, but if you're on the UGB, the meeting starts at 7.30, not we often start at seven, but the meeting's going to be at 730. And if you need the link, it'll be our regular UGB link. Um, I can email it to you if you want. Bible study still happening on Mondays at 1130 in person and online and coffee hour is on Zoom on Thursdays at 930. Any other announcements that need to be made? Our closing hymn is number 176, Lift Up Your Heads, O Mighty Gates. <laughs>
fill you until you overflow with joy. May the coming of the Christ child free you to live with hope and determination. May the Holy Spirit empower you to work for the reign of God on earth. At Advent, at Christmas, and throughout the year, may we be inspired to share the good news of God's vision of peace, love, and joy. Amen.
thanks everybody. Folks on Zoom and Facebook, have a wonderful week. Folks who are here, we have um, refreshments in the